It is now time for members' statements. The member from Thornhill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Today, I'm pleased to introduce our guests from the Canadian Automobile Association. The CAA is a not-for-profit auto club offering automotive care and roadside services, insurance, and travel. My constituent, Elliot Silverstein, is the manager of the government relations team at CAA South Central Ontario. Elliot and his team work to ensure that the voices of over 2 million CAA members are heard by government while keeping their members informed about issues that affect them. I have tabled a private member's bill, Bill 30, the Highway Incident Management Act, to better coordinate the clearing of accidents from our highways. Elliott has been one of the strongest supporters of Bill 30 and has recommended this government move quickly in its implementation. This past summer, Deloitte issued a report following stakeholder sessions on towing regulations, which stated, and I quote, many panel members believe that defining and addressing traffic incident management is essential for the development of an effective regulatory framework. I'm constantly impressed not only with how well the CAA works with the government, but how harmonious they are with all the other stakeholders involved in keeping our roads safe, such as the Insurance Bureau of Canada, law enforcement agencies, and tow truck associations, just to name a few. I want to thank the CAA for all that they do to ensure we get to where we need to be as safely as possible. Thank you. Thank you. The member statements. The member from Oshawa. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, and as as you may well know, that we just uh, just had an election, and I think that we can anticipate changes when it comes to our provincial government and the new federal government. I want to talk about the potential opportunities when it comes to manufacturing and figuring out a solid path forward. You know that I'm here on behalf of the people of Oshawa, but communities across the province want to know what the relationship is going to look like between the provincial government and the feds. So let's talk about the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP. Harbour signed a deal that possibly binds the incoming government and casts that shadow across all of our communities. Projections of job losses across the country, across our communities, are staggering. As many as 24,000 automotive jobs will be impacted by the TPP across the country. That's as many as 1,500 jobs in Oshawa alone. Every job is important, Mr. Speaker, and communities are going to be sorely impacted. If Liberals, provincial or federal, are really interested in protecting good jobs, then they will listen to the communities that are going to be affected by this deal. They would listen to Oshawa City Council and Unifor Local 222. Communities are saying that it's time for the federal government and provincial government to sit down with the cities, sit down with the municipalities that rely on manufacturing and that are going to be affected by this deal. This deal, as it stands, has fewer protections than the Americans were able to get, so where are our assurances that jobs won't be wiped out? Commit to all three levels of government working cooperatively to figure this out. Commit to a strategy that will address manufacturing in our communities. No more talking about talking about it. Do something. We need a plan to keep jobs in this country Thank you. and communities working. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. Member from Mississauga Streetsville. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, November the 10th is Optometry Day in Ontario. Members of the Ontario Association of Optometrists can invite MPPs to visit their practices to see how eye care continues to evolve in the province of Ontario. Optometrists are our province's primary eye care providers. Last year, more than 100,000 unnecessary eye-related hospital emergency visits cost Ontario $17.6 million. Optometry Day offers MPPs and local community members the opportunity to observe the day-to-day -day work that optometrists provide to their patients. In our Lisgar, Meadowvale and Streetsville neighbourhoods, I visited my own optometrist, Dr. Sabrina Ahmed, to see her, her staff and some of her many patients at the first-ever Optometry Day pilot at her Meadowvale office. Dr. Ahmed has spent her time and her money ensuring that she is using the latest techniques and the most modern technology to protect her patient's precious vision. As we age and when we are young, we all need to have our vision checked regularly. Adults can have their vision checked under their OHIP coverage every other year. Seniors are covered for an annual visit. Many common problems that affect our vision later in life can be discovered and treated if we look after our eyes at least as well as we look after our cars. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member's statements, the member from Nipissing. Uh, Speaker, residents in my riding were shocked last month, Speaker, when it was announced 
that nearly 160 full-time jobs would be cut from the North Bay Regional Health Centre. As I've stated before in this House, this now makes more than 350 frontline jobs cut at this five-year-old hospital, including 100 nurses. The City of North Bay passed a resolution recently calling on this government to take action. North Bay City Council believes the benchmarks the province has set forth uh, forcing these cuts upon the hospital and that the province has an obligation to the health and well-being of the people served by this hospital. As a result, Council has asked the province to, quote, to make adjustments to the financial targets and expectations of the local health centre that could lead to some maintenance of service levels and to, quote, respect the hospital's request for one-time transitional funding. Speaker, I understand there are discussions ongoing with the local LIN. Now, this is a bureaucracy that spent $4.7 million last year without seeing even one patient, I might add. Uh, and their meeting regarding the situation at the hospital. But without this one-time funding for severances, we will see 50 more frontline workers fired from the North Bay Regional Health Centre. This government needs to get its priorities straight and stop the frontline health care cuts in my riding and across the province. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Nickelville. Thank you, Speaker. It is my pleasure to rise today to recognize Community Health and Wellbeing Week here in Ontario. The week is being celebrated across our province and by the 109 community-governed primary health care organizations that belong to the Association of Ontario Health Centre. Before I became an MPP speaker, I was the executive director of the Community Health Centre in Sudbury, and I also serve as the president of the Association of Ontario Health Centre. So it's no surprise that I am very passionate about this year's theme that reads as follows, Community Health and Wellbeing shift the conversation. This is, there is a need to shift the conversation in our province, Speaker. We must be able to have a different decision-making process regarding the overall health of our people as well as our health care system. The government promised to develop a culture of health and a community wellness strategy, but yet there are no updates on this strategy, especially as it applies to people that face barriers to good health. I'm talking about people living in poverty, Aboriginal people, Francophone, people living in underserviced area, rural community, the LGBTQ community, racialized group, people with physical and mental disability. To ensure everyone can enjoy the best possible health and well-being, we need a healthcare system that is equipped to deal with all of the parts of people's lives that affects their health and their well-being. Happy um, health, Community Health Week, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Ottawa South. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario has been providing leaning edge treatment and compassionate cares and support for children and their families for over 40 years. One of the supports they offer are CHEO Connect symposiums. CHEO Connects is a free information series for parents in the community which provides trusted information and access to local experts. Next Thursday, October 29th, CHEO Connects will be joining the Ottawa Carleton District School Board and offering a session entitled Understanding Concussions, Recognizing Signs and Symptoms. The two-hour session will start with a brief presentation on concussions, followed by a Q&A session with a panel of experts on how to prevent concussions and how to recognize, treat, and monitor the progress of recovery. As you may know, in 2013, Ottawa mourned the loss of Rowan Stringer, a student at John McRae High School who lost her life due to a concussion she sustained while playing rugby. I am proud to be co-sponsoring Rowan's Law with my colleague from the PM Carleton, Lisa McLeod. I want to also thank and congratulate her for her work on this issue. Rowan's Law will address raising awareness about concussions amongst young athletes, their coaches and their families. I look forward to participating in the CHEO Connect session next Thursday at Nepean High School and engaging with parents about keeping our kids safe. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Lampkin, Kent, Middlesex. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, taxes are too high in the province of Ontario. Our tax code is too complicated, and the people of Ontario cannot afford to be paying new and even higher taxes under the federal and provincial Liberal governments. What we need is an economic plan for jobs in Ontario that, that cuts taxes and lessens the burden on small businesses and families. History proves that when governments reduce the tax burden, jobs are created, the economy grows, and families are better off. 
The taxpayer is not a bottomless piggy bank. Keeping taxes down is not just good for the taxpayer and the economy, it also keeps government accountable, pushing them to spend smarter and actually set priorities. I am urging the Trudeau and Wynn Liberals today that before you go looking to increase taxes and bring in new ones, consider all the revenue you are getting now from hundreds of taxes like the HST, the gas tax, the death tax, the beer and wine tax, capital tax, corporate income tax, corporate minimum tax, insurance premium tax, the employer health tax, international fuel tax agreement, land transfer tax, school taxes, personal income taxes, uh, provincial land tax, race tracks tax, retail sales tax. They go on and on and on, Mr. Speaker. The people of Ontario are having a hard enough time making ends meet and paying their hydro bills, all the while worrying that the struggling provincial economy will mean more jobs. Mr. Speaker, we need an, ec Thank an economic plan today for jobs in Ontario that cuts taxes. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to rise before you and share with you news of a groundbreaking innovation underway in Waterloo Region. Recently at the University of Waterloo, our government launched a new pilot program to allow for the testing of automated vehicles on Ontario roads. And I was very pleased to be joined by the Ministers of Economic Development and Transportation and the MPP for Cambridge. Automated vehicles or vehicles that drive without human assistance are able to detect their surroundings using artificial intelligence, sensors, and GPS. And this technology has the potential to help improve fuel efficiency, reduce traffic, greenhouse gases, and accidents. The Institute of Electrical and Electrical Electronics engineers has forecasted that by 2040, Mr. Speaker, that automated vehicles are going to account for about 75 per cent of all vehicles on the road. The University of Waterloo is one of the institutions involved in the connected and automated vehicle industry, and it's home to WaveLab, the Waterloo Autonomous Vehicles Laboratory, which partners with local robotics companies. Now, at our announcement, two students who started their own self-driving company gave Gave us a demonstration. They drove their autonomous golf cart around the Waterloo campus. It was very, very impressive. We know that bringing together academic institutions and businesses is going to foster research and the commercialization of great ideas. I'm proud of the forward thinkers in my region who are advancing this kind of innovation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This Friday, I will have the pleasure of attending the Bowmanville Hospital's 29th Annual Harvest Ball at the Ajax Convention Center, a wonderful evening of dining and dancing for a good cause in our community. This year's theme, Under the Big Top, will treat us to, a, to champagne reception and masquerade draw. Of course, it all, it's all to the benefit of the Foundation's mission of bringing capital projects and equipment to the Bowmanville Hospital. The hospital itself has been and continues to be central to our community and one I am very passionate about helping in our region. I know hospital staff there work their hardest to bring quality care to patients and I am eager to help them in, do so in any way I can. I look forward to seeing con constituents and local business owners out doing the same this week and I thank the Hospital Foundation for their efforts to organize this event. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements.